This is David, you're watching BTEC, and welcome to another episode. This one is sponsored by Direct Mobiles. For the best mobile deals, check out directmobiles.co.uk. Sony Xperia 1 Mark II was recently released in an event through YouTube, but because of this damn virus, nobody got to attend the event, which was supposed to take place at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. There was a press event in London that I did attend, but mysteriously, the review samples that were supposed to be there had to be returned to Tokyo. I'm told that review samples will be sent here as soon as they arrive. It's a mystery right now and I can only speculate, but I am worried that it does have something to do with the supply chain and the worldwide situation. But in the meantime, I want to talk about the Xperia 1 Mark II, which in my opinion is the best looking smartphone that Sony have ever produced. And that's saying something. Sony have won industry design awards for the Xperia 1 and you can't deny that Sony always produce a good looking phone. Think of the curves that we saw on the Xperia XZ2 and XZ3 or the boxy design of the XZ1, all really good looking phones. But this time Sony have outdone themselves and I absolutely love this design. The flattened sides will make it more comfortable to grip. That is something that you notice if you use an XZ1. Gorgeous color options. I'm on record saying that I really don't like black phones, but with the Xperia 1 Mark II, the black seems to just work so well, especially with the red accents on the camera. It's always a good sign when you can appreciate the design through the TV screen. You know when you get it in your hand, you're going to appreciate it even more. I really like the fact that they've kept the camera shutter release button as well, as they do with almost all of their smartphones. They are really the only company that seems to do it, and I've absolutely no idea why. I really think more companies should follow suit. Using the camera shutter button just makes it feel like you're actually taking pictures with a camera. It's just a more enjoyable experience rather than just having to tap on the screen, hoping for a bit of feedback to let you know that you've taken a shot. It's just much more fun to take pictures with the proper shutter button, especially as you can half press to focus and fully press to take the shot. And in a move that I can't decide whether or not is genius or the equivalent of bringing back micro USB, Sony have chosen to bring back the headphone jack for their flagship Xperia 1 Mark II. But no, I do think I am in favor of this move. It's just good to have options and to be able to plug in a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack if you need to. Bluetooth headphones are great and all, but they do drain your battery life quite a bit and you'll get a much longer listening time if you just plug some headphones in. But I do wonder if this means they're going to include an FM radio in the default software. You know what, I really hope that they do. Listening to an FM radio through wired headphones is going to drain your battery far less than listening to the radio over the internet through Bluetooth but I can't get over how good looking the new Sony device is. Flip it over and we get what is one of the most advanced displays that we've seen on a smartphone. This is a 4K HDR tri-luminous OLED display using the tech from the Bravia TVs. Significantly, it's also the first 5G enabled device that has a 4K display. And that means that we can stream high quality 4K video directly to this phone with no problems at all. Every other device that's capable of streaming high quality 4K obviously can't display it in full quality because it doesn't have a 4K screen. The 21 by 9 cinema wide aspect ratio makes this smartphone a great one for movie lovers. More and more content these days is being produced at 21 by 9 which suits the Xperia 1 perfectly and will totally fill the screen with no borders. But obviously you will get a bit of a trade off when it comes to watching content at 16 by 9 because you will lose quite a bit from the sides if you choose to zoom in or you'll get quite big black borders if you don't. But as we saw from the Xperia 1 from last year, the quality of this display is sure to be superb. Although I did have one criticism about the screen on Xperia 1. It's just not very bright and sometimes in extreme bright conditions, it can be a little bit tricky to see. This is one aspect about the screen in the Xperia 1 Mark II that I'll be looking very closely at. Definitely excited about this one here at VTech. It does seem like the influence from the Sony Alpha Division is strong. And somebody who does use Pro Mode in their smartphone, I can't wait to try out the Photo Pro app. Like last year's Xperia 1, which had the Cinema Pro app, Photo Pro app will give us full manual controls of the camera whilst mimicking the user interface from the full frame mirrorless Sony cameras. In fact, the cameras obviously is something that we're really gonna be looking closely at. But if we take a look at this market in material, the lens is 24 millimeters and it's set to f1.8. But if we forward to the next shot, you'll see that it's still set at 24 millimeters, but it's f1.7 this time. Now I'm sure that they didn't say that this phone had a variable aperture of any kind, but it has got me wondering why I put the f-stop number on the screen in the first place and how has it changed? Really looking forward to finding out about that. Almost all of the competition has gone for high megapixel cameras this year, but Sony have chosen 12 for all of their three cameras, 
even though they are the ones that are supplying these high megapixel sensors for their competition. But this time they're going to be using two of their Exmor RS for mobile imaging sensors and one regular CMOS sensor. The Exmor RS sensor seems to be the stock that Sony reserves specifically for their smartphones. And it is basically a smaller version of the type of sensor that they use in their mirrorless. But this time they have the addition of a time of flight sensor, which is there for accurate subject separation in portrait shots by producing an accurate map of what's in front of the camera. It is the same type of system that we've seen work extremely well with the Huawei P30 and Mate 30 Pro and recently in the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. But with Sony supplying the camera sensors to all of the major brands, including Huawei with their P40 Pro and its 52 megapixel, well, rumored 52 megapixel sensor, Sony have chosen to stay at 12. Seems like they're gonna be the only ones doing so in 2020 with their flagships. But we know from the quality of some of last year's smartphone releases that it's not all about the megapixels. And it's going to be really interesting to compare this smartphone camera with the likes of the P40 Pro and the S20 Ultra. On paper, it does seem like Sony will get left behind, but I think that Sony's rationale for sticking at 12 megapixels is to keep noise levels down, especially when shooting video. With Sony's excellent color science and the pre-installed Cinema Pro app, there's no denying that although the Xperia 1 did get a little bit left behind with the competition when it came to its photos, it didn't for video. Please check out my Xperia 1, a filmmaker's dream video, which I'll leave a link for down in the description. And with 4K at 60 frames per second promised for Xperia 1 Mark II, I have a feeling that this phone is gonna be among the best for shooting video in 2020. I'm on the case daily at the moment to make sure we get an Xperia 1 Mark II arrive here very soon. So please subscribe to BTECT, especially if you're an Xperia fan, as we'll be all over this one. And of course, when you're ready to buy your new Sony, head over to the Direct Mobile's website. The best place to look for your new phone, because you can compare all of the available deals with all of the networks right there on the One website. And with over 24 years of award-winning customer service, you really are in good hands. Their link is in the description below or just search directmobiles.co.uk. And if you're looking for the best tech and accessories, then check out the BTECT Amazon shop. Everything you see there is recommended by us. And every time you buy through there, a small piece will go towards the channel. If you bought from there already, then we appreciate it so much, thank you. And if you haven't checked out the BTECT Amazon shop, well, the link's in the description below. And that's it from me for today. More mobile tech tomorrow. Follow me on social media. My name's David, this is BTECH.